Man, I can't wait. Oh, let's get prepared. Pizza not, can't wait. This is going to be great. Well, I hope it is. Get your brew. I've got a coffee. I don't drink tea. I know a lot of people like tea, especially in the UK. I don't know if I've ever seen anyone have that much bad luck in a day, but anyway, Graham's the testament to that, and uh, I mean, gosh, that is serious bad luck. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, let's crack on. Pitching not, almost forgot about that. <laughs> Here we go. Hi all, Warren here from Toy Fishing. Hope you're enjoying the content, and I really hope you're enjoying these overview videos where we hope to take a look at all these internal workings of all these great fishing knots that we've all used over the years. So the Pitzer knot, this is a great knot and probably one of the first knots to be tied in this reverse concept, allowing for the tag to be fastened slightly differently. I'll start this knot off by talking about the clinch knot. Now I know we have got a series on this knot which would be great for you to check out. Just click up here if you want to see the clinch knot. So the clinch knot can be tied in three ways, two of which we've covered in our clinch knot series and a new one I'll show you today. So this is method one where you wrap five wraps up the line and then tuck it through and pull the standing in. The second method I showed you is useful for thicker lines where you wrap three wraps up then two wraps back down and then tuck it through the loop and pull the standing end. The third option is this where you pass the line through and then grab it and pinch it with your right hand then wind it down the line five times and tuck it through the bottom and then pull the standing in. So this clinch knot actually unwinds and forces the straighter line connected to the tag to twist in the same direction. So the twists are shared between these two lines but with all three ways producing the exact same knot. Brilliant really. But at the same time giving just a different way to the final result, a clinch knot. So this is why I refer to the pitcher knot as a derivative of the clinch knot. It has the same concept as method three of tying the clinch knot where you start from the top and then working down on the twist but unlike the clinch knot there's no tuck at all at the bottom of the knot nor does the line go through this loop at the lower end of the line. Instead, it passes from the bottom to the top of the knot and put through the top loop which you hold in your right hand. So this knot draws its name from a German chap called E. Pitzenbauer. So kudos to him on getting a great knot like this tied all over the world. It's also similar looking to the uni knot where once the knot's fully tied down there's this outer wrap of single line that runs around the inner wraps. Once you get the grip of tying these knots using the strategy I showed you in our how-to video, click up here if you haven't seen that, or if you're unsure what I mean. Basically, where you have your three fingers on your left hand remaining to tie the rest of the knot. It will open up the door to a lot of knots which are very similar to this one and have been modified from the original clinch knot, but have this reverse method to tying them. As this knot is slightly complicated, I would recommend you try a simpler knot if you're tying a fishing knot for the first time or if you're tying to show your kids to tie their first knot. So the tag end will end up coming out to the side of the knot near the top of the knot. I would suggest that the tag is left to at least three millimeters or an eighth of an inch length as this may fail if left too short. It's also great that the tightest region of the knot, the top, is where the tag is cinched. This area normally does cinch down the hardest on a clinch knot and yet it's being used effectively to clamp the tag. The only downside here is if you're tying thicker monofilament the tag may be problematic as it sticks out 90 degrees. However, this won't hinder you from catching fish. It's more of an aesthetic criticism. 
You also need to check the standing end of the line as it exits from the knot to see if it's damaged, especially from heat, due to the lack of saliva or not wetting the knot enough. If it's warped, I'd cut it and retie. There'll be a lot of friction in this knot when tightening down, so just make sure you do it slowly, keep it wet, keep it well lubricated, and uh, you'll have a, a good pits and knot. My main criticism on this knot is not really evident in braided lines, but in monofilament and fluorocarbon. The outer wrap tends to sit on the inner wraps, and it just doesn't seem very secure. It's kind of just loose from the bottom up. The bottom of the knot is left unfinished in my opinion. It just struggles to seat properly and looks a little untidy if I'm honest. Another shortfall of this knot is the amount of line you need to tie the actual knot. Now, now you may be able to pull it through carefully through the knot as you're tightening up, but again, this could take a minute. That's four or five minutes extra time when you're making a rig for bait fishing and the fish may have already left the scene. If you're fly fishing with expensive tapered tippet or you're lure fishing with some really, really expensive fluorocarbon leader, my guess is you might not be using the pits knot. Similar sort of thing to the Palama knot where you've got a lot of excessive line and you're just wasting a lot of good line in tying the knot. So here we have another knot derived from the original principle of the clinch knot and in one way you could say it's improved the clinch knot by doing something slightly different to the improved clinch knot in securing the tag end detail which will always be the clinch knot's downfall. Yes a great knot, certainly worth knowing and adding to your repertoire. Right so I've got to give this knot a rating, I'm going to give it a 6.5 out of 10. I'm not confident it's actually better than the clinch knot. We're going to find out real soon in the World's Strongest Knot series when we put the pits in knot on this machine and find out exactly how it behaves. This is Toyed Fishing. Please like, please subscribe, please check out our website. And just like my buddy Graham and his attitude towards enduring through the junk life throws at you and finding a solution even in the worst scenarios this knot may just give you the edge when everything else is failing that day. Take care guys and if I was to give you some homework today it would certainly be to tie a neat, neat, strong, clean, consistent looking knot. Try the new grip, try it out, it's worth, it's worth giving it a go. World's strongest knot, the pits and knot, it's coming up soon on this machine, can't wait. Let's see how this knot does. Do my reservations stand true or will it perform well? Who knows, we're gonna find out soon. Um, yeah, <laughs> take care. And if you're joining us for the World's Strongest Knot, assuming it's come out, get a brew and a uh, cup of tea, cup of coffee, whatever you drink. And um, yeah, let's. Uh, I'll see you soon. <laughs> Cheers, guys. All right, going to start off uh, with a quick story. Um, it's happened many years ago. We were uh, most of us were 18, just finished school. My aunt's got a house down in a place called Betty's Bay. Amazing place to go on a holiday if you ever do get a chance to go to South Africa. Do pop down to Betty's Bay. Anyway, um, we stay in the house, beach house. Um, there's about 10 guys staying there. Yeah, we've all got our surfboards, fishing rods, and uh, Graham, I think he was like a Springbok Scout or something, I don't know, something like that. Anyway, this guy, like pretty much, he was our mother for the week. Yeah, he done all the cooking. So, uh, <clears throat> I've been there before a few times on holiday uh, when we were with family and stuff. So I knew the place quite well, but the only sort of trick about it was back in those days, everything was gas. The lights was gas, cooker was gas. Uh, heating was gas, all sorts of stuff, gassed a lot. So we're, uh, there's nine of us sitting at the table in the morning, it's probably about half ten, we'd all sort of got up, bit of a headache from the night before, and uh, Graham's uh, cooking up something in the in the oven, and uh, I'm looking at the other guys, and I'm guys, can you, can you smell that? What the hell? What's he, Graham, what are you doing? And uh, 
he's trying to like light a match and I'm like, dude, are you sure you haven't had the gas on for a while? He's like, no, 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 I've got it, I've done this before. I was like, okay, whatever. So anyway, we're uh, dealing out the cards and stuff, sort of pre-breakfast card game and the next thing, boom! It's like freaking hell, this freaking flame launches itself out the freaking oven. Graham's like, whoa, oh, all went. I mean, I was actually facing looking at it. it's a big kitchen. I mean, it's, I don't know, whatever, sort of eight by eight, typical holiday house kitchen, massive. And uh, this freaking flame just like, like engulfed him. I was like, oh my gosh, dude. Everyone's like off their seats. A few people have sort of wet their shorts and that. And it's like proper. Anyway, Graham is literally like freaking every hair on his his eyebrows were gone, he's freaking half, he lost his half, his hair. It was all right, he didn't get any burns on his skin and that. It was kind of one of those uh, sort of singed burns, but anyway, that was freaking, uh, we were just, uh, well, after the initial sort of boom and whatever, we were sort of laughing, rolling on the ground, couldn't believe it. And uh, anyway, that was that. And uh, on the same day, I kid you not, on the same day, um, Probably about a, I don't know, seven or eight foot short break. It was freaking massive. Anyway, I left. Well, a few of us just left our balls. Anyway, Graham had to recover from the situation. So he's got his surf well, He's walking down. None of us are even bothering. We're just kind of like, well, let's just go out for a laugh. Anyway, Graham goes out. He's literally out for like I don't know, like about a half a minute. Kitchen, or he takes his way. We're like, dude, what are you doing? It's too close. I kid you not. Freaking, I don't know, six or seven foot short break. He's dropped in on it. I kid you not, the wave sucked so much water back. It was just sad. And I'm like, oh my gosh, and a freaking and straight in for boom on the freaking on the sand. It's like face blood, boards like pet in the sand, freaking waves washing it. He's like freaking in a tumble dry. It's like, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. I don't know if I've ever seen anyone have that much bad luck in a day but anyway Graham's the testament to that and uh, I mean gosh that is serious bad luck anyway <laughs> yeah let's crack on pizza not almost forgot about that <laughs> here we go